speak truth to power. Today is a different edition. And remember, the segment is brought to you by the kind caters of McBancy. In America, they say McBancy. Now, McBancy is a perfumery, an indigenous one, ancient one, located right here in Ghana. In fact, actually born and birthed. In fact, and butted right here in Ghana. Now, McBancy specializes in the production of high-end candles, perfumes, cartons, home and office diffusers, and refreshments of the highest quality and longevity. Now, it is home to over 20 well-curated perfumes. McBancy is seeking to retell the African story for the very first time in our history. So today, they have a certain line of perfumes known as the Spirit of Timbuktu. Spirit of Timbuktu. Now, the Spirit of Timbuktu line of perfumes include Ndewura uh, Jaka, Nefertiti, Dinga, and these are powerful names of our ancient ancestors. Oh my God, have mercy. Now those of us who know Ndewura Jaka will go without saying that Ndewura Jaka was that wonderful creator and inventor and founder of the Gonja Kingdom, the biggest in this part of the world today called Ghana. My brother, my sister, we also have Nefertiti, the very beautiful queen who together with her husband Akhenaten propounded the theorem of Akhenatism, aka Abrahamism, AKA the belief in one God. My brother, my sister, she later became a Pharaoh, the very first woman Pharaoh. My God, I've missed such a powerful woman. How about Dinga Sise, the very first king of the unified Ghana Empire, whose capital was at Kumbisali? And the commercial capital was right there at Adagosta. Oh my God, I've mercy. At the height of the Ghana Empire, Bakrur became that wonderful site of mining that was never, never equaled by any other kingdom in the world. So imagine buying a perfume or getting a perfume that has the names of these wonderful ancestors. It's more than a treasure. Now you can give that as goods and gifts. Oh my God. Mm -mm -mm. And of course, when you wear these, now you are walking in the world of Mansa Musa and the conquering power of Indewura Jakpa. Jakpa B. Jakpa, pa, pa, pa. Oh my God, the sexiness of Nefertiti. In America, they say Nefertiti. My God have mercy. Hear me now. Listen. Go get your perfume from McBansy right now. Encourage the Ghanaian business, the African business. And when you wear these perfumes for 72 hours, you don't need any other perfume. It's thick and heavy, beautiful. And oh, the aura around it is very, very interesting. You must go get it, my brother, my sister. Yes. Mark Bansi is located right there inside North Legon, Wisconsin Road, uh, inside the Cheesy Pizza building. Or when you go to East Legon at Dringano, uh, uh, just after Kahaya, you will find Mark Bansi. Yes, for more purchases and inquiries, please call Mark Bansi on 0242-250-574. That is 0242-250-574. My name is Sir Tilly Black Rasta. I want to say thanks so much to Mark Bansi for this wonderful sponsorship. And this is where it all starts. The taxi driver. Thank you so much. That is me, my seven eye. And... Uh, this is the black pot, aka Kuku Show them where we speak truth to power. My brother, my sister, here we don't criticize. If we must criticize, however, we would only do that just to build and not to destroy. This is the black pot, aka Kuku Show them all, and we are in the service of God and country. Oh gosh, when we criticize, we are only criticizing to build and not to destroy. It's all in the interest of our people, our continent, our land. Yeah. And from the news reel, we keep it real. This is what is happening right now. Now, the very first story today I want to look at is coming from 3news.com, and that is the most authentic source of news online. It says Richard Anani dismantles a Drumisu mantra, says NPP choice should be based on competence. And I read. Mm -mm -mm. Former Minister of Health, Dr. Richard Anani, has poo-pooed the Adrumisu campaign mantra by some new patriotic party NPP flag bearer hopefuls. Now, notably amongst these is Alan Chermantaine, who was made Adrumisu to win. It is my turn, his main campaign mantra. Oh, gosh. Kofi Konedua Preku is another flag bearer hopeful who has also made this one of his messages. Now, the two ministers who served in the Kufo administration argued that they should be elected the next NPP flag bearer due to their previous close defeats in past NPP primaries. 
Mr. Chemertin lost to President Akufuado twice, whilst Dr. Apreku lost to former President Kufuo and the current president coming third in 1998. But the health minister in the Kufuo administration has rejected the proposition by these two, insisting that the choice of flag bearer for the MPP should be based on competence and not any Adrumisu mantra. <laughs> Well, that tells you the kind of mind these people have. I drew me so. Why? Why I drew me so? Is it a monarchy? Is it a monarchy that when the father is dead, his son has to take over? From his son to yet another son, even if there are a bunch of fools in the family. It means we're going to be ruled by idiots all this while until the end of time because of the so-called Edrumisu Totin. Let's be smart. Look at how kingship in Africa has treated us all this while. Now, if you are lucky to come from a family of wise people, then you would have a wise monarchy. But if it is the other way around, then you know that you are going to roast in hell and nobody would care. I do not want to mention names of monarchs around Africa who are visiting the people with nothing but nonsense. Today, this is what these guys are saying. I drew me so. Is it a monarchy? Is it a kingship? Is it chieftaincy? Where by virtue of birth, you can be king even if you don't have the knowledge and the competence to become one. My brother, my sister, these are some of the things we should be pushing away and kicking out of our way. It doesn't help us in any way. It is a shambolic statement, my brother, my sister. That is why we have been asking you to open your ears and your minds all this while. So that at least you would be able to know exactly who is tomfooling you. And who is coming to your table with nothing but buffoonery. Think about that, my brother. Now let me come to Richard Anani. Now those of us who are a little younger than I am might not remember this man but let me push you into his history remember this was a man at the time hiv aids was so feared around this world eh? to those of you who don't remember we historians never forget anything hear me now richard anani was a health minister under kufuo and when hiv aids was on top of the radar everybody was running away and I remember TV was blasting it every day. That every day, how many people caught HIV AIDS? We all were scared. We did not even want to shake hands with anybody for fear that we might contract the HIV virus. Richard Anani went outside the country to represent uh, the Ministry of Health. And you know what he did? He went and slept with a woman without a condom. My brother, my sister, health minister who was supposed to be going around preaching HIV AIDS and trying to keep the people healthy using his ministry, went for an HIV summit and he slept with a woman without a condom. This woman finally got pregnant and it was a whole banter on radio in those days between the side chick and the wife of Richard, Richard Anani. I will never forget this. My brother, my sister, it just reminds me of what the um, national... Um, is it National Defense Minister? No, National Security Minister. We all remember that he went for a meeting, a summit, my brother, my sister, outside the country to discuss security for our country. We were paying him with the taxpayers' money to attend this summit, only for him to go and turn himself into yet another Richard Anani, turning around my brother, my sister, in a pajamas, modeling like an untrained model, my brother, my sister. And at the end of the day, my brother, my sister, he's been quiet from that time. We must all remember these people who sold out the country. Today, they are all bald-headed with age. Today, they are all pot-bellied because of age. My brother, my sister, but what they did to us should never, ever be forgotten. Richard Anani has never, ever apologized to the people of this country. He never apologized to Kufu. For making him a health minister who went around sleeping with a, a woman without a condom. My brother, my sister. Oh, Jesus have mercy. Now, these are the modern day saints who are coming to tell us that they want to be presidents. President over who and how? 
and for the wheel. Next thing I want to look at is coming from Graphic Online. And it says, Akosa Japan should, uh, well, 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 should shut up with her fabricated stories about Gamru. And this one is coming from uh, Rex Omar. It's coming from Rex Omar. That's what Rex Omar is saying. But let me take this one from Peace FM Online first. And what is this one saying? Hear me now. He says, Akosa a Japan. Mm, 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 mm. My brother, my sister, this is interesting. Can you believe this? Akosua a Japan to organize Nima boys to stop Gamro from attending Akwabua's funeral. Imagine. Can you believe this? And when you read the story, it says that uh, accomplished veteran musician, Akosua a Japan, oh my God, is going to Nima to organize boys to stop Gamru from attending Akwabo's funeral. And I am shocked. Now, Nima, when you see her there, you know what to do to her, right? This is a big insult. So, Nima is only known for violence, right? Nima is only known for people with no common sense, right? Anybody who is on an agenda, anybody who wants idiots to come and beat people, they go to Nima. They don't go to the police anymore. Oh, what a joke. Ah, of course, you are bigger than this. You might be angry. There's a better way to vent your anger. You are going to Nima. Why are you not going to Canton Mess to organize the boys? Why are you not going to um 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 which other area to organize those boys? Mm. Now, of course, Japan, you stay at Kaswa. Why are you not organizing boys at Kaswa from your backyard? But you are leaving Kasua. You will come and pass Weja. You will pass Makati Hill. You will pass Malam. You will go all the way on the M1. That's if you choose to go through the M1, which I know you will. And you will go all the way to Nima to organize boys. Nima, you should seek an apology. Nima, ask Akosua Japan to apologize. Or else, I'm not coming to Nima for one year. Nima must ask Akosha Japan to apologize. Why is Akosha Japan not going to cantonments? Why is Akosha Japan not going all the way to East Legon? Why are they not going to North Legon? But they are going to Nima. So you see the bad name they give us in Nima every now and then? No politician would even look at Nima because they see Nima to be violent. Okay, so let's get into the meat of this thing. Now, she says that there was a time Akwabwa asked for only um, some help from Gamru, and they gave him 250 Ghana cities only. He wanted to retain it. Now, Rex Omar is saying, why is it that you haven't come on all this while to bemoan the sad situation of Akwabwa? You waited till he died, and you said this. Now, Rex Omar also says that, hey, listen, Akwabwa only asked us for help once, and we went and took him all the way to the hospital. We did not even give him cash. In fact, we paid the doctor to take a very good care of him. That was what we did. Now, even though Gamero is not a welfare organization, welfare takes 10% of all the money that comes into Gamro to be used to deal with the welfare of the artist. That is what it is, my brother, my sister. So to see what is happening, she's going to Nima. To organize Nima boys. Because we in Nima, we have no brains. We in Nima, the moment they come and say, go and fight, we say, I will lie. Please, we demand an apology. We, the people of Nima, we demand an apology for this disrespectful behavior. I respect Akusia. I love Akusia. Anytime I meet her, please don't bring your politics to Nima. Don't bring your gamro politics to disrespect the people of Nima. We don't like that. My brother, my sister, I will take this one too. This one is coming from Ghana Web and it says, Ghana's return to IMF has made Ghana beyond aid the butt of jokes. You know what it means to say butt? But is the backside, backside, backside of all jokes. And this is coming from Mahama. So put it in your mind. But let me look at this one before I look at the but of jokes. 
And this one is coming from my joy online. And he says, it is now up to Akufuado to decide Oforiata's fate after IMF deal. And this is my very good friend, the Subin MP. I read, member of parliament for Subin constituency, Eugene Bwachi Enchi, has said that following the closure of the International Monetary Fund deal, the new patriotic party MPs who called for the dismissal of the finance minister in 2022 are waiting to hear from President Akufuado on the way forward. Speaking on top story, Mr. Entry said that only the president has the executive powers to dismiss Mr. Ken Oforiata and thus their job as MPs was to expose the shortcomings of the minister and why he should not occupy this office. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah! Okay, so this is what it is. So, Mr. President is still lackadaisically slumbering in the calcon of absolute despondency. Can I say it again? Mr. President, I said, is lackadaisically slumbering in the calcon of absolute despondency. The man is not ready to listen to the people, arrogant as he is. This is a man who was bathed in arrogance. All he wanted to be was a president because his father was a failed president who was kicked out of the presidency, my brother, my sister. As a ceremonial head, he wanted to also become one. Now his father was kicked out in a coup d'etat. But the fact that in these days we don't encourage any coup d'etats anymore, he is basking in the glory of this no coup d'etat and no violence against the presidency. So he's becoming more and more arrogant. My brother, my sister, Ghana hasn't reached there yet. We are looking up to the days when we shall have impeachment taking center stage. As it stands right now, my brother, my sister, it's so much of a shame. Mr. President says, after the IMF deal is closed, this man will leave. The deal has been closed. The first tranche has even arrived. This man is still sitting in there, sick as he is. Walking around, parambulating every corner and telling everybody, hey, I am not taking no salary. I am only sacrificing for Ghana. And Ghanaians say, we do not recognize your sacrifice. Could you please move? He's still in there after the IMF joke. Now my mama says, going to the IMF is the butt of all jokes. In other words, the backside of all jokes. Is he not right? My brother, my sister, Ghana beyond aid, Africa beyond aid. And when I bring up this, they say it's not an event. It's a journey. Jesus have mercy. When the president said that, did he put any timelines to that? I am sure when he told us we're sitting on money and that we needed good leadership to unearth the money, it was also not an event. It was a journey. And he's taking us through that dirty journey of going knocking, cap in hand. Knees are ground, begging, crying, and humiliating the red, gold, and green with the black star in the middle. My brother, my sister, I am so ashamed. A country that has all the gold. We are the number one gold exporter in the world. Yet we are broke. Is all the gold going to Alistair Matthias? He is able to smuggle. Between how much? Oh, Jesus have mercy. 60 million, 40 and 60 million dollar worth of gold. Every month he does that according to him. My brother, my sister, this braggadocious guy by name Alistair Matthias can tell the whole world how weak our systems are. Why, why wouldn't he say it? When our Minister of National Security has become an untrained model, modeling in front of the cameras of prostitutes, like in the days of Richard Anani, today Richard Anani wants to be president. Jesus have mercy. Every joker in this country wants to be president. I wish this were in the days of the revolution, where all of them would be shaved clean and asked to run a marathon and see if they will end it. A lot of them would collapse of heart failure. Sick people. They all want to be presidents so that they would use the presidency as a retirement benefit. Fire burn them. I am done. Miss him up.
It's been the block pot. AKA Kuku shoot him. And mommy, I just rushed giddy 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 to stop it. What's him happen? <laughs> I see solution also f solving some problems there. This morning he's been so busy all the way through the afternoon. I think we need to increase his salary. Oh, hallelujah. My producer does not need a salary increase. You know why? He drinks only seawater. He drinks only seawater. And he's not interested in models. Touch not my anointed. Kobe Ura. Momone Ura. Indomira. I think my chair is broken. I'm trying to bounce it. It's not bouncing anymore. My God. How about each crane? I think some witches came into the studio whilst I was away. I bounced only two times and the thing cannot even bounce again. How about you cry? Me say I'm bounce beam. Eh, one what I say? What I say? This what I say. What I say? What I say? What I say? Producer would make sure he will change the chair tomorrow. I hear there is a chair making factory that wants to supply us with chairs. We thank you. In fact. The whole world will get to hear about you. We'll make sure Obama takes one of your chairs for the White House. In fact, now he's left the high to us with the Black House. And uh, which way, my name Black Rasta, and I want to say I appreciate you and I will love you. It's been the show that you've been waiting for all this while, and the show has come to an end. Have you been worried about the severe abuse and indecency?